Hey, I heard you want to be a game developer. Well, stick around. We'll make your first 2D top-down shooter in Godot in just 10 minutes. We're going to want to start with a node 2D, which will be our world node, and a kinematic body 2D as its child, which we'll be naming player. Kinematic bodies are objects which would act by code. You're also going to want to add a collision shape and a sprite node as a child of our kinematic body. These two child nodes will be the form of our player. We'll be adding in a sprite, which is just a simple 16 by 16 white square. I'll be setting the extents of our collision shape and note that it should fit perfect with the size and shape of our sprite. Next up, we're going to add another child node for a player, which is an area 2D with another collision node as its child. We're going to be using this as our player's hitbox. Therefore, we're going to make the extents a little larger that it overlaps our player's shape. And we're done. Now let's get coding. Now don't freak out yet, I'll make it as easy as possible. We're gonna start by setting up our first variable, move speed, based highly off of personal preference, so I'll call divs in 500. On our physics process, which is an inbuilt function made for physics-based movement, we'll set a variable for vector2, which will indicate direction using an x and y axis. Now before we get into more coding, let's map our inputs first. I want my player to move by WASD. I'll be mapping it accordingly with my preference. W for up, A for left, so on and so forth. We can then use these input maps with an if statement. If W, which corresponds to up, is pressed, our player would be moving on the negative Y axis. Going downwards, then that would be on the positive Y axis. And for the left and the right movements, both would be on the X axis, whereas right would be positive and left would be negative. Next up, we're gonna be setting our motion variable to an inbuilt function called move and slide. This would allow our player to glide and possibly slide with other bodies in the scene. Also, we'll be multiplying our motion towards our move speed variable. Lastly, normalizing our motion would keep our speed equal throughout the period our inputs are being pressed. Now, like most generic top-down shooters, our player would need to be able to aim. And we could do that with just one line of code. With just these lines of code, we are now able to do this. What is a shooter if you can't shoot? For our bullets, we would need a new scene. The setup would be exactly the same as our players. However, instead of a kinematic body, we'll be using a rigid body which is an object acting upon physics-based simulations. This time, we would be rescaling the same sprite to something smaller. I'd like to go for a small rectangle, which sort of imitates the bullet look. Set the collision shape so that it fits perfectly. Also, we're going to want to rename the rigid body to bullet with a capital B and save the scene. After you're done, let's get back to the main scene. We'll be setting up more variables. I'll be setting my bullet speed to 2000 and we're gonna set another variable to preload that bullet scene that we just made earlier. In case you wouldn't be able to find a path for your bullet scene, you could do it by right clicking on your bullet scene, copy your path, and paste it as a string inside the parentheses. Next up, we're going to be making a new function called fire. In this function, we'll be setting a variable to instantiate that bullet scene from before. Now what's going to happen is that once this fire function would be called, an instance of the bullet scene will appear with the same position and the same rotation angle as our players, and we'll be applying force equivalent to our bullet speed towards the direction which our player is facing, and that once this bullet would be instantiated it would be a child of our root scene. That was a long one. Technically, with this function, our player is now able to fire. However, we don't have the trigger to do so yet. We're gonna do it with an if statement to check if we're clicking the left mouse button. But we haven't mapped that yet, so let's go back to our input maps and map the left mouse button accordingly. Last thing that we need to do is that once we click the left mouse button, the fire function would be called. All 
alright, alright, now our bullets are flying higher than Alan Iverson at his prime. But we couldn't call it a game if we don't have enemies. Let's say the world node gave birth to another kinematic body and named it Enemy, and that this enemy has three children named Collision Shape, Sprite, and the eldest, Area 2D, and that Area 2D also has a child named Collision Shape Jr. Due to bad family planning, the family moved to a separate apartment in the New Scene Avenue. In New Scene Avenue, the enemy became unique, the sprite became a little smaller, and adjusted to look red. Make sure that the collision shape fits perfectly with a sprite and that the area 2d collision would be a little larger since it's gonna be the enemy's hitbox stories over let's get back to coding under our physics process function we would be setting a variable to have our enemy identify our player Next up would be to have our enemy move towards wherever the player is in the scene. Dividing it by a smaller amount would make the enemy faster and vice versa. Along with this, we also would want the enemy to look at the player. Lastly, we're gonna add another variable for Vector2 and set this Vector2 towards the Move and Collide function. This would allow the enemy to collide with in-game environment. And we're almost done. Next up is that we would want our enemy player to be able to do damage and vice versa. And this is where our area 2D hitboxes come to play. First, on our player script, we're gonna make a function named kill. If this function is called, the game would reload. Click on the area 2D and on the node screen beside the inspector, click body entered and connect this function towards our player body. As you can see, a new line of code is generated. This code will be checking if another body collides with our area 2D. We can specify that body as our enemy and that once the enemy collides with the player, the game reloads. Easy! Now we can do the exact same thing to our enemy area 2D. However, this time we're gonna specify that if the bullet collides with the enemy, he's gonna be deleted off the scene. Open up a new scene because we're gonna make ourselves a tile map. Let's have a node 2D as the parent of this sprite. Now Sprite has two children, Static Body and Light Occluder. Static Body was too excited of adulthood and got a child named Collision Shape. We'll use the same sprite, however painted black, and set our collisions that it fits perfectly. Now for the Light Occluder, just click this button right here, that button there, and make sure you fit it perfectly. Convert the scene into a tile map and make sure to save it with a T-Res extension. Now let's head back to the main scene and we're gonna be adding in a sprite as the background. Make sure that it is gonna be a child of our world node or else you're gonna get problems. Change the color into something nice. Let's add a tile map node as a child of our world node and we're gonna take the TRS file into our tile map. In my case, I'll set the cell 16 by 16 to fit perfectly and congratulations, we can now draw our own levels. And let's speed it up a little bit. Once we're satisfied with how our level looks like, we're gonna be duplicating these enemy nodes into their proper positions. Next up, as a child of a player, we'll be adding in a camera node, which is gonna be our current camera. And don't forget to enable smoothing. Lastly, add in a light 2D node. We're gonna be using an image of a spotlight. Now, if you don't know how to make one, it's easy. First, you open any image editing program then do this. Change the light colors to something of your preference and don't forget to enable shadows. Whoa. And the last thing that you need to do is save your work and hit that subscribe button. Ay, ay, ay.